And I, so I think four or five seasons here, you all have lost the second game of the season, but have bounced back in the third game. What do you think is it's going to take to do that and kind of replicate that same result this time? Uh, I believe each season is <clears throat> a new season. You know what I'm saying? This year is definitely different than any season I say that I've been a part of. Uh, number one, it's all about a mindset. You know what I'm saying? You're not able to be stuck in the same place that you're in. Um, of course, you know, the energy of the locker room is pretty tense right now. Um, guys are upset and whatnot of the loss. And, I mean, that's expected. Um, you you know what I'm saying? You want to be kind of upset, and if they weren't, then I feel like that would be an issue. But, um, like I said, it's really all about the mindset. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, just changing the narrative. You know what I'm saying? Coach always talks about uh, how we're still a 5-7 team until we change it. You know what I'm saying? So. Our whole thing, or well, my whole thing to the team is um, let's not be stuck. You know what I'm saying? Let's go ahead and move forward. We have to get past this, and <clears throat> it all starts today. You know what I'm saying? So we got to come out today uh, really ready to work and just get it in. And is there anything in particular about you or the offense really want to emphasize before uh, SEC play begins in this final tune up? Uh, yes, most definitely. Um, let's, I say we need to treat every rep and practice like a game rep. You know what I'm saying? Uh, really emphasizing the details, uh, making sure that we're all on the same page with communication and all of that, and really just executing everything on, uh, during practice. We'll go second row on the right side to Olin and then Carter. Anais, you've been on a really good team here, and you've uh, seen some teams struggle here. What can, can you put your finger on what creates the difference between you know that season that where you had a lot of success and other seasons when you struggle? Uh, yes. Um, I'll say it's really all about a mindset. Um, going back to that, uh, let's go back to 2020 year when we had took that loss against Alabama, the second game of the season. Um, you know, we wasn't expecting to lose. Everybody, you know, had their thoughts on the game or whatever, but we came in expecting to win. You know what I'm saying? We put in the work and we fell short. But at the same time, like, we knew you still got to work. You know what I'm saying? You're not able to just let a loss affect you. And I feel like <clears throat> in other teams, when we had losses, uh, I'll say, you know, the mindset was a little different. We took a loss, and it was hard to bounce back from some of those losses, you know what I'm saying, uh, just because of the things that were going on with whatever was going on at the time, you know what I'm saying? But with this team, I feel like in order for us to bounce back, you have to change your mindset, you know what I'm saying? You're not able to be stuck in where you are at. And by doing that, I mean, the only way that you can do that is making sure that you go hard every single day during practice, you know what I'm saying? You have to uh, force yourself to want to be out there, want to go out there and be coached, you know what I'm saying, and just doing everything right. Are there any qualities that you see on this team, and if there are, what are they, that would make you believe that y'all could bounce back and go on a roll like you did in 2020? Uh, I believe so, yes. The guys that are on this team, um, we definitely have, I'll say, some dogs, you know what I'm saying? Guys with the mentality that they want to get better. And you can see it already in the locker room. Like, of course, we're hurt by the loss, you know what I'm saying? Nobody wants to lose. But the guys that uh, are in the locker room, they are affected, you know what I'm saying? They don't want to feel this feeling again. After the game, it was quiet. Um, a lot of distress, a lot of things that were going on that happens, you know, with a team that loses. But those teams that come back are the ones that can flip that switch, you know what I'm saying, can go ahead and change their mentality and shift the narrative, basically. And it's all going to start today, so we'll see. We'll go third row on the left side to Carter. Nias, uh, I, know, I know you slipped at one point. I know there was some other slips from the team. Like, it was the field conditions, was it that, or was it the rain before the game that – that maybe caused some of those slips? Um, I mean, things happen in the game. Uh, I'm not really going to blame, you know, any outside circumstances that I'm not able to control. Um, I wish I never slipped. I should have kept my footing, you know what I'm saying? Probably would have been better if I used two feet instead of one on the plant and whatnot. Um, like I said, I'm not really able to blame the field or whatever, the rain. Condition, things happen in football, you know what I'm saying? You're not able to control the field, whether it's wet, whether it's slippery not able to control some of those things, you know what I'm saying? So for me to say that uh, the field was slippery, so that's why I kind of threw a pick or whatever, I'm not really able to say that, you know what I'm saying? I should, me personally, I'm the type of person to be like, I should have kept my footing, you know what I'm saying? And 
coach probably going to say the same thing. So I'm not really able to blame the field on that. Um, guys were slipping out there. It did rain, you know what I'm saying? So you can put it, you can think however you want on that, but I'm blaming myself. Based off what you've seen from uh, the defensive backs in, in practice, what, what gives you some confidence that what, what they showed us, I guess, uh, against Miami, that, that it'll look a lot different going forward? Yeah, um, really just those guys, I know they're going to come stronger than ever. They always, uh, you know, bounce back from tough days during practice or whatever. And I, we have some real good leaders on our defensive side that I know are going to get those guys right. You know what I'm saying? The whole team mindset is to win. And I don't think nobody ever wants to lose. Um, and if they do, then, you know what I'm saying, we need to go ahead and get them up out of here. But um, with that, I'm pretty sure our DBs are going to be straight. Like I said uh, earlier, you're not able to be stuck, you know what I'm saying? And the main thing for a DB to do is flush that play down the toilet and keep going, you know what I'm saying? You're not able to be stuck in that same place that you're at. You got to move on and get better. We'll go toward the back of the room, just in front of TV row, and then to Tyler. And I asked after the game that the camera caught you sitting on the bench by yourself. You're obviously upset. You mentioned the locker room. Are you confident that all the guys that you're playing with take that loss as personally as you did? Um, I hope so. You know what I'm saying? I'm not able to speak for everybody. I'm pretty sure that a lot of guys are taking it as personal as I am, if not everybody. Um, and I'm going to make sure that, you know what I'm saying, we don't let that happen again. Um, the way that my mentality is on winning. I'm a winner, you know what I'm saying? I want to win, and I'm going to make sure that everybody around me has the same mentality. How, how confident are you that there are other guys in the leadership group that are as committed to that as you are? I'm very confident. I'm very confident. I have a lot of trust in my guys. Um, a lot of those guys have been with me throughout you know, my four or five years being here, and they are winners too, so I'm very confident. We'll go back to actual TV row on the left side to Tyler and then Ben. Anais, what have you seen from Connor in the in these first two games? Um, and just guess how much confidence do you have in, in him moving forward? Yeah, yeah, man. He's a great quarterback, um, a great leader. Excuse me. I don't know if y'all saw the stat or whatnot, but <clears throat> he was the most pressured quarterback uh, this past week and played very well. You know what I'm saying? He still played a very good game. Um, they were sending dumb blitzes at us. so. It was tough to see, you know, him getting pressure, him getting hit like that after the game uh, when I watched it on film. But he's a great leader, you know what I'm saying? He cares. Um, he wants to win. Uh, he tries to bring everybody along with him, you know what I'm saying? And he's going to go hard no matter how he feels. So this loss I know is going to push him to make sure that everybody around him goes even harder. I know he's going to push me, you know what I'm saying? And I'm supposed to be the guy that pushes everybody, I guess. But um, he's one of those guys that – comes to work every single day and is going to make sure that he gets the best up out of you. So that's my, uh, you know what I'm saying, that's how I look at him. Uh, that's what I expect out of him, and he's a great person. And then what? It, what's it like um, working with and seeing the development of the, the younger wide receivers? I mean, what Noah Thomas has been able to do this season, and then, you know, Evan Stewart continues to do what, you know, he did last season. Mm -hmm. um, man, that whole receiving core is is. It's a blessing to be around those guys this year, you know what I'm saying? Just being able to play around those guys, um, work with them, you know what I'm saying? They have grown so much, uh, not just, you know, on the field, but outside of the field, uh, mentally, um, spiritually. They're, all of those guys have definitely gotten better in every aspect of, uh, in their lives, and I'm just excited to see where their future takes them. But right now, as we're uh, going with, you know, the season and whatnot, I'm just excited to see how they bounce back, you know what I'm saying, see what their character is and see how they uh, take this loss. We'll stay behind the lights and go to the right side to Van and then Bram. And a couple times seemed like offense did find its rhythm a little bit, you know, especially start the second half and then right before the fourth quarter. Just what did you feel like you guys saw that maybe glimpses of, hey, when we're rolling, this is kind of what it looks like and, and let's try to just keep that up for, you know, four quarters? Um. Really, uh, I saw a lot of hope, you know what I'm saying? Um, there's many plays that were out there that we could have made. Um, circumstances happened to where Connor was pressured and whatnot. But at the same time, I mean, like, I'm pretty sure everybody saw it. Like, guys were open, plays were being made. Um, circumstances happened to where 
we either turned the ball over, had to punt, you know, things happened in the game. But um, the fact that we were still able to score 33 points, you know what I'm saying, came and uh, still were able to go back and score even after, you know, some of the things that were happening throughout the course of the game. Um, that just shows our resiliency, you know what I'm saying, being able to still go even when things aren't going right. Um, still going to have to do the exact same thing that we've been doing in practice and go even harder at it, you know what I'm saying, whether that's with uh, making sure that we're um, keeping our tempo up, you know what I'm saying. I feel like that was a factor that was could have been, um, I guess you could say, implemented a little bit more. Um, in the game, but at the same time, like I have nothing but great hopes for this offense. We uh, definitely show some moments, you know what I'm saying, where we um, had some drives going and could have scored, ended up with nine points in the third quarter, something like that. Um, but at the same time, like we just got to finish, you know what I'm saying? And that's my whole thing. We were moving the ball. Um, you can see that we still had the ability to go score. Um, we were making two plays, like in two plays, we were already down the field getting ready to score. So, I mean, we just had to do everything right. You know what I'm saying? Just do all the little things right and finish. We'll go front row on the right side to Brent and then wrap things up with Cease. What do you mean when you say that the energy of the locker room is pretty tense right now is the way you used it? What, what do you mm -hmm. mean by that? Um, really, all I mean is, you know, guys are upset. You know what I'm saying? Um, it was a lot of tense energy after the game. Uh, it was quiet, you know what I'm saying? People were, me personally, I was upset. Um, I know, you know, as a football player, all types of emotions can go down when, after you take a loss. Uh, some guys are ready to fight. Some guys are ready to throw stuff around. Some guys are ready to cry. It, it doesn't, you feel what I'm saying? Like, all types of emotions. So that's what I mean by tense. Like, it's just, you don't know. It's all bottled up right now. So, I mean, the only thing that can take that tense out of the – Locker room is going out there and practicing, making sure we go hard. You know what I'm saying? Just releasing all that negative energy. You mentioned Connor being the most pressured quarterback, according to stats. What does that say about the offensive line needing improvement so he's not the most pressured guy? Um, just communication, you know what I'm saying? That's a, a tough job for the offensive line to try to block seven people when there's only five of them, you know what I'm saying? And on top of that, we got a running back that had to stay in when we can use him as a receiver or a tight end to stay in when we can use him as a receiver, you know what I'm saying? So really just all about communication from all the way up top, all the way down to the bottom on the field, you know what I'm saying? Um, really just staying together and making sure that we're not, uh, I guess, going up against each other, you know what I'm saying? Like beating ourselves in a way. Um, really just trusting the uh, coaching, trusting the plan, and just executing. We'll go front row on the left side to cease to wrap things up. Yeah, my question was about, about the blitzes as well. So did Miami blitz more than you anticipated? You mentioned seven against five. Sometimes wide receivers have to block. You mentioned tight ends staying in, running backs. So did Miami change things up and do something possibly you didn't expect? You guys couldn't handle that? Uh, now nah, we knew, you know what I'm saying, that they was going to bring some pressures. At the same time, like, it's kind of hard to, um, I guess you could say, like, execute a play when we have a play called and then they end up bringing seven people. You know what I'm saying? Like, we only, most of the time, only have six people in the box to block. You know what I'm saying? And then when they bring that extra additional person, that puts pressure, I mean, yeah, that puts uh, the pressure on Connor to go ahead and make a play. You know what I'm saying? So... He was still back there making plays, and I give all my uh, kudos to him. You know what I'm saying? He was back there trying to do everything he could to make a play, and he was still, like I said, he was still making plays. So, um, really, just all about communication. Um, if teams go ahead and blitz us later, we got to be ready for that. You know what I'm saying? So, that's that's all about it. Yeah. All right, that's it. Thank you, Anais. Thank y'all. God bless.